Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm trying out some digital painting again, but this time I'm going to do something in color. If you saw my last digital painting video, you'd know I was trying a new technique, but I stuck to black and white to keep things simple and to follow a tutorial I was going along with. But this time I'm going to work in color to take it up a notch. And I didn't want to just paint in color, I wanted to be able to adjust my colors nicely. So first I focused on creating the art and then I did some adjustments at the end to tweak the colors and I'll tell you about how I tweaked all that. So first here's a little speed paint of me creating the art and then I'll talk about the lighting adjustments after. In the meantime, I will tell you about the sponsor of this video which is Skillshare! Skillshare is an online learning community where they have a bunch of video tutorials on all kinds of creative topics. It's been really helpful for me for learning new things about Photoshop and digital painting. With premium membership, you get unlimited access to over 17,000 different classes, and it starts at less than $10 a month, which makes it a really great deal for online education. But if you would like to get your first two months for free, the first 200 people to click the link down below will get their first two months free, and you can cancel at any time. So for the base painting, I pretty much follow the same technique I did in my last video, which I'll actually link down below. I also use Skillshare in that case to learn some digital painting techniques. But then to take it a step further, I followed a lesson by Kasha Zmokla. It was called Add Drama to Your Photos with Colored Lighting in Photoshop. This is a very detailed lesson. It's very long. It's broken into three parts. It is very, very comprehensive, and I feel like I learned so much from it. I'm only touching the basics here in this video. So if you would like to dive into the specifics and get all the juicy info, I'll have a link to that specific tutorial down below as well. All right, so now let's get on to the adjustments. The first step is to go to the window that has all your layers in it. At the bottom, there is a circle that is half white, half black. Click on that, select solid color, and then pick a mid-tone gray. To make it exactly a mid-tone gray, change the brightness value to 50%. That means it's exactly halfway between black and white. When you create this layer, it's gonna make a solid block of gray. And so go to your layer styles and change it from normal to color. Suddenly you'll be able to see the art underneath and it will all be in grayscale. This is to help you see the values in your art, which is the lights and darks, the highlights and the shadows. It's helpful to look at values in grayscale because when something is in color, it can be hard to tell what colors are darker and which ones are lighter relative to each other. Now we're gonna make two more adjustment layers. You're gonna click on that same little circle icon and this time go to curves. Name one of the layers dodge and one of the layers burn. If you don't see this little graph, go to Window Properties and it should bring it up. On the Dodge layer, grab the middle of the graph and pull it up a little bit like you see here. And on the Burn layer, grab it and pull it a bit down. I know there's some controversy around a lot of Photoshop tools, including things like Liquify, Dodge, Burn. And honestly, I don't see a problem in using these tools. Some people say don't rely too heavily on them, but honestly, you're just using Photoshop to its potential. It's not like you're forced to play on hard mode and you have to do everything just by painting it perfectly the first time with a hard round brush or something like that. You know, some people try to put all these limitations on digital art, like you're only allowed to do these things, you're not allowed to do those things because that's cheating. Honestly, if the tool helps you, then use it. Now you'll have noticed that when you pulled those curves, it tweaked the lights and darks of your drawing. So you'll notice on those curve layers, there's a little white square next to it. Click on the square and then hit Control I and that will invert it so it'll become a black square. When the mask is black, it means that effect is not activated. So those curves you just pulled and tugged on and it tweaked your drawing, you basically just said, okay, don't do that. But you're not disabling it completely because that would be pointless. What you're gonna do is take a white brush and paint in the areas where you want that effect. So for example, click on the black square on the burn layer and paint in white in areas where you want it to go darker. That will allow you to deepen the shadows. And then if you go to the dodge layer and paint on that black square, 
You can make areas lighter. You can boost the highlights and lighten areas. For mine, I wanted to add a bit more shadow on the face, especially around the chin and the top by her hairline. I also smoothed out her neck because the blending was pretty choppy. I also noticed a lot of areas on her hair where there weren't enough highlights, weren't enough shadows, or I just wanted her hair to be overall lighter at the top of her head, so I tweaked those things using these layers. And keep in mind, you are using the regular brush tool for this. You're not using the burn tool or the dodge tool. These are just burn and dodge layers. They function like those tools, but it's more custom and you're just using the regular brush tool. Some settings you might wanna change on your brush. You can leave opacity at 100%, but turn flow really far down, like maybe 10% or less. This way your changes will be very subtle and very gradual. Also make sure your brush hardness is set to zero so that you get the nice feathered edges and you don't have a sudden harsh line where your burning and dodging meets the other areas of the painting. At any time, you can toggle these layers on and off to see the effect that they've had because it feels like you're not doing much at first because your flow is so low, but when you toggle it on and off, you see how much of an effect you've actually made on the original picture. You can also toggle the gray layer on and off to see how it affected the colored version. If you wanna make more major changes, consider making another burn and another dodge layer, and this time move the curves a little bit farther so it has more of an effect. So that's an easy way to tweak the values in your drawing. It's super, super helpful. Next up, I wanna add some interesting colors to the picture. Click on the adjustment layer button and select solid color again. This time, instead of gray, fill it with a color. I'm selecting orange because I want that to be the dominant color for this. Change the layer style from normal to color and then reduce your opacity. The amount you reduce it is totally up to you based on how you want it to look. Then click on the adjustment layer button again and this time pick selective color. You're gonna have some sliders in front of you to control the colors, play around with them to see how it affects your drawing. There's also a drop down menu for colors because you can affect different colors with this, but I just left it at neutrals and that way it kind of affects everything. So play around with the sliders and see if there's something you like. Now you'll notice that on these layers you have that white square just like you did with the burn and dodge layers. Again, those are masks that you can use to paint things in and out. I wanted a lot of this yellow color so I left the mask white and played around with painting different areas black to remove some of that orange color. After playing around with it, I realized I didn't want to erase any of it so I just left it solid orange. Then I repeated those steps, but with blue this time, and I did invert the mask for this one because I only wanted bits of blue here and there. So I filled the mask in with black and then colored with white to bring in some blue areas. I decided to add blue to the main shadow areas. So the hair that goes behind her head, I added a bit under her nose, a lot on her neck and on her shirt and in some other areas in her hair. So the shadows have a bit of blue to them and then everything else has a bit of that orangey yellow to it. If you have a very extreme light source, you can get really crazy with this, like a really harsh color on one side and a really harsh color on the other side of the face. There's so much you can do. My drawing's pretty tame. It just has a light source coming from the front, so it's nothing fancy. But I can still play around with all these colors. I ended up doing a second color variation where I used pink. I really like these colors because it looks kind of like a neat filter was applied to her. But one thing it did is it did make her shadows less vibrant. That was the point because I was adding blue. I was trying to make it more cool. But I thought, what if I add a warmer color like pink? And then I erased around the middle of her hair so that the yellow would pop. So here's what the painting looked like. I added a little vignette around the edges. And then here's how it looks with the dodge and burn. And then here's how it looks once I added the colors. Here's what that alternate pink color scheme looks like. So as you can see, it's quite the difference from where it originally started to what it looks like now. I do really like this pink one, but I'm not sure if I like this one more. It's just a different look. Either way, I think the two final ones look better in terms of values, but in terms of color, any of these work. It's really up to personal preference and how you want your art to look. Like I mentioned, that tutorial I followed is linked down below if you want the more comprehensive lesson. Thank you Skillshare for once again sponsoring my channel. It is a huge help. The link is down below for the first 200 of you to get your first two months for free. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Artie Advent video.